2008 Land Rover LR3, North American specification, otherwise known as the Discovery 3 in most of the rest of the world. This project is to replace the factory jack, the scissor jack there. I don't like that. It's not very safe in my opinion. With a bottle jack. And making sure that the new bottle jack and everything else that's required to change a tire on the side of the road fits in there. The first thing you'll need to do is remove this big foam piece from this area there. By the way, this is the rear passenger side of North American spec. I actually needed to break this into two pieces to get it out. You might be able to get it out in one piece. I was happy to split it into two because I know that I'm not going to be needing it again. I am, however, going to keep it just because, I don't know, because. So look, mine, I managed to basically break it in half, okay? So I'm not going to need that again. So the bottle jack that I chose is one that I just had, to be honest with you, and I figured it would work okay. It's a Craftsman, six ton. The model number, 950282. Now it lifts up to 16 and 13 sixteenths of an inch, so almost 17 inches and the lowest is eight and five eighths inches. Now, if you were to use this bottle jack and jack it up, jack the vehicle up on the normal jacking space, because of the suspension articulation, this jack might not be high enough. A lot of people use sprinter van, Mercedes sprinter van jacks, and they work very well. Um, but I'm, I've been lifting the vehicle up quite happily underneath any of the four lower control arms and I find that this works just fine and in actual fact you only need a couple of inches lift in order to do that and my opinion is the lesser you need to raise the shaft here the more safer it's going to be all right now what I did is I built this wooden plate you see this jack sitting on this base plate here I fabricated that, so let me just tell you about that. Uh, this is just a foam piece, and by the way, these foam pieces, I got these from Harbour Freight, they come in two foot by two foot squares, and essentially the purpose that they were designed for is floor matting, but I use these foam pads for all sorts of things. So I cut to size pieces of foam, and I laid them in here. So there's a piece on the back there, grey, that grey there that you see, that's a piece of foam. And there's also a couple of other pieces, if you can see that, a couple of other pieces in there. There's a piece just uh, in there. There's a piece there. So there are enough foam pieces, and I found that I didn't even need to glue them. I cut them tight enough so that they all sort of uh, wedged in together there okay that is to stop the any noise from the jack and other tools rattling around so back to this this is just a little uh, foam piece and I used epoxy and velcro and the prickly side of the velcro I put on the top here and again I glued that using epoxy so that's just a little piece of padding to stop this wobbling around as it's uh, grabbing onto the lower control arm, all right? Let me explain this in more detail. So you see there are four places where you have this. This is a wing nut, and I'm just gonna just undo this. There we go. Take off a washer. Now this is just a metal plate that I made. I had some uh, metal laying around. This is steel, eighth of an inch thick. Thicker would be fine as well, more stability. 
drilled a hole in it, smoothed out the edges a little bit. Okay, another washer here. Take that washer off. Okay, and then it's a bolt. A bolt through the wooden base, and there's the bolt. All right. I purposely made sure that the bolt had uh, Phillips head so that it would be easy to tighten up without having to get out uh, special socket sets and all that. Okay, so this can be put together very easily without any special tools. All right, so now I'm just going to undo the other three and I'll show you that this piece of wood actually folds in half and it was designed to fold in half so that it could fit in the space here back behind where the jack is. So you see that slot there? This wooden base frame actually folds in half and is able to quite easily fit in there, all right? I'm doing this one-handed, sorry about this. I'm actually gonna undo these first. Take that up. Like that, undo this one. There we go. Take that off. Take this one off. Okay. Now, when I move the jack away, you will see that it sits into an indentation here. What I did is I used a trim router and I just cut away some wood here to a depth of a quarter of an inch so that this can fit in without moving around, okay? Now if I turn it over, I wanna show you this. There's the other three nuts. You see there's three hinges there, all right? Now when it's on the ground, of course these hinges there, they stick out a little bit. So what I did is I just uh, made some little plate things. I made four of them. I don't know if I need to use all four when I'm changing the tire, but what they do, is essentially it means that it can be on the ground and it's not going to damage the middle of these hinges all right see moves around nicely half inch half inch thick in my case was what I needed to make sure that they were uh, enough wood to get over those things so then it folds in half there we go and this as I said I won't do it now with one hand, but this easily slots in there. A little bit tricky with one hand, but with two hands, very easily you can get it in and out. Let me tell you about the dimensions of this, if you want to do this yourself. This is three quarters of an inch thick. I used OSB, you could use solid wood, otherwise you could use plywood. Obviously don't use anything weak such as particle board. In any case, three quarters of an inch thick and each piece is exactly 12 inches by 6 inches, so this gives a total base size of 12 inches by 12 inches. I wouldn't go much taller, much bigger than that, um, to be honest with you, otherwise you'll have difficulty fitting it in there. You could even go a little bit smaller and it'll be easier fitting it in, okay? Let me tell you about the rest of the stuff. So everything else you see here fits inside. So the first thing that goes into the back slot is the folded base plate, okay? And then, I think I can do this one-handed. Excuse me for a second. Just grab the bottle jack, there we go. So look, there is a little ledge. The bottle jack is sitting on a little shelf, essentially, okay? And very stable, okay? and it's got, not gonna make any noise with any of the padding. And that shows you that there's a ton of space available in there. So the other things that I have in there is, I use the original 
uh, tool kit from the car. It has two of these wheel chocks. They're not massive, but in an emergency, they'll be just fine. And then I have, this is the uh, handle that came with the bottle jack. I put that into this slot here. There was something else in there I've taken out. Here is a Phillips screwdriver that came um, with the kit. I'm leaving that in there. And also on the other end, it has a flat head. So again, I can use a Phillips head to tighten up these uh, bolt heads if I need to, or to undo them. And then here in this slot is the uh, wrench here to undo the wheels. I'm going to have a, another, I'm going to have my own 22 millimeter long handled socket, but I'm going to leave this one in this kit as well. Okay. So that goes in there. It folds up, velcros up, and basically that kind of goes in there like that. A couple of other things I've added. So here is a pouch. You see this pouch here? It's actually from O'Reilly's. Looks like uh, performance tool, part number W88979. There are three pouches, each of them slightly larger than the other one, in this kit. About seven or eight dollars. Okay, there we go. There's another pouch. So, what I have in this pouch is some spare hardware for my folding clamping bracket deal, right? I've got spare nuts, actually not nuts, well yeah, wing nuts, spare washers, spare bolts, because on the side of the road, especially if it's cold and wet, you could easily uh, lose a few of these. So there's a bunch of spares in there. The other thing that's inside this pouch is a Ziploc bag with two pairs, two or three pairs of gloves in them. Disposable, very thin, you know, vinyl or whatever gloves, all right? That's to make keep your hands clean while you're changing it. This other pouch, I have one large black sack. This is to unfold and put on the ground, and it keeps you very, very dry, of course. Now, this is three feet by four feet. I could make it even bigger by just cutting along one or two of the seams, but... As it is, it's actually big enough, I think, three feet by four feet. The other thing that's in this pouch is just a large Ziploc bag, 13 inch by uh, 18 inches, a very large, strong Ziploc bag, just useful for all sorts of things. Right, that's that. So these two pouches easily fit in there as well, okay? The other thing that's in there is this. This is a set of three, in this case it's called LED road flares, but essentially they are warning, safety, emergency, flashing orange lights. This also comes with a white light there, all right? So this can be used as my flashlight and or it can be used to put on the side of the road to warn other vehicles. As I said, there's all sorts of uh, different flashing modes. In this case, I've just turned it on. And if I just turn it, it'll just flash differently. All right. So these are only about $15 from Amazon or somewhere. The nice thing with these is uh, being magnetic, you can just stick it up the top of your car there. And that's probably a really good way of warning other vehicles behind. I think much better than putting it on the ground. So you can uh, get a pack of these three and they also fit in that space in there. Now there's also space for a couple of small towels and these are good for padding as well to stop any further movement in there but a couple of those small towels, they fit in there as well. All right, so uh, that's basically it for there. Now, what I did want to show you over on the other side of the vehicle, in this panel, in this space behind the panel, I just have a uh, multimeter there, useful. And also I have a portable 
jump starter and battery pack. So that thing in there is absolutely powerful enough to jump start this car. I had a weak battery a while ago before I swapped it out and uh, this thing had no problem um, jump starting this vehicle. So it is both a jump starter and a battery pack. So uh, it's very nice to have that on board and stowed away so that you're not taking up floor space in the vehicle. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.